you very much. Thank you. We have, a, uh, we have a fine program for you folks tonight. Uh, last night, my first guest won an Emmy as Best Sports Analyst Commentator, and before that, he had been the youngest head coach in the history of the NFL and uh, one of the most successful, and the most successful. We're delighted that he's here tonight. Please welcome Mr. John Madden. First of all, congratulations uh, on your Emmy last night. And this, uh, I said that wrong the first time. You are the most successful coach in I NFL know. history. There's a lot of ways they count those things up. I, I uh, percentage-wise, I think. Uh, yeah, the highest winning things. percentage. I think so. Yeah. Who would who would be of the active people close to you now? Don Shula, I think Don Shula would be close. Yeah. Tom uh, Landry, of course. Yeah. Bud Grant. Uh, let me ask you uh, before we get on to other matters about Herschel Walker. Uh, recently signed for a huge sum of money, didn't complete his uh, senior year at Georgia. Uh, do you have any opinion on that? Or yeah, I have. I have three feelings on it. One, I think it was it was smart for Herschel Walker. You, know, you take a, a kid; he has the opportunity to do it now. He got five million dollars for three years. There was some talk that it was sixteen and a half million. It was five million. He got a million dollars cash up front, and you know you never know what's going to happen next year. I mean, he could not take that money and then go out and get injured at Georgia and he has nothing. By doing this, I think, you know, he had an opportunity, he took advantage of it. So I think it was good for Herschel Walker. I think it was a great coup for the for the new league, the USFL, because it gave them a lot of credibility. Yeah, well, yes and, and no. It, it did from the standpoint that suddenly they had a world-class football player in their midst, but then the, the commissioner said, no, no, we're not going to be tampering with uh, college players before their eligibility, and uh, when he had a chance to act on the decision, he said, well, no, this is kind of a special case. So well, I think so. I, I think they had to do it. You know, there's so many lawsuits now. If you, if you have someone who wants to sign, Herschel Walker wanted to sign, and he wants to sign, and he's ready, you darn near have to sign him. I mean, yeah. I think he could have really done the same thing to the National Football League. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, I think it was good for the league because they got him. Now, they may say that, you know, we're sorry, we didn't mean to do that, but yeah. I'm going to stun. They do have him. Yeah. That was a coup. I don't know necessarily that it's good for college football. I think that once that dam breaks, you know, that's one thing. They take the basketball players out of college uh, before their eligibility is up into the pros. They do it with the baseball players. And the one thing football never had was the player that would go to the pros before his eligibility was finished. And once you crack that thing, it couldn't open wide and that could be some problems well it was it was ugly for me NBC drafted me right out of junior high so it was uh, <laughs> I feel like that uh, potentially was damaging we have some uh, photos here of you in action as a coach <laughs> now we're, are you regarded as a guy who was baiting officials nasty yeah, to him I mean used to him? To, no I used to talk to I was never I was always nice to him you know, nice to I, him. all right uh, well here's yeah. here's John Madden being nice to an NFL official <laughs> and uh, do you remember the circumstance there Probably. It looks like the guy was telling me that someone was in bounds or something, and I was saying he was out of bounds. You never know with those guys. You know, they're, <laughs> they're nice guys, but I remember once, this could be the time, it wasn't, but up in Denver, we were playing in Denver once, and the only 15-yard penalty I ever had in my life in a regular season game. And what happened was Jack Tatum hit a guy on the sidelines in bounds and knocked him out of bounds, and the referee throws a flag. So I say, you know, that's, that's wrong. I mean, he hit him, it's not a penalty. You know, and then I added a, a few bleeps. So well, the now official... Said, what were the bleeps? Give us an indication of how severe the bleeps might have been. Uh, severe bleeps. I mean, uh, when you talk about bleeps, we're talking about good, strong bleeps. <laughs> we're not talking about but the now, time that you, the type you talk about. But things have loosened up since then. Is there no. a chance that you could... No, it's still too strong, still, still even too under okay. a loosened up type of okay. deal. All right. So anyway, so the official goes and they mark off the 15 yards against us. So then he comes back and said, who did you call a bleep? Mm -hmm. So I'm still mad. So I said, look, there's only one bleep here, and that's you, you bleep. Yeah. So now he throws the flag on me uh -huh. because I told the truth. I could have said my equipment man did it. No. So now they go, and they march another 15 yards off us. So, you know, we finally calm down, get the things straightened out. The next pass, Greg Morton goes back to pass. Phil Villapiano, my linebacker, intercepts it, runs it back to the 50. 
We get the ball. Kenny Stabler, our quarterback, goes in, throws a touchdown pass in the first play to Dave Casper. So now we're lining up for the next kickoff, and that same official is on the sideline there, and I walk up to him, and I says, that proves you're a bleep. <laughs> and he didn't give me another problem. Uh, <laughs> that's, probably, that's probably what I was doing then. You, um, I, oh, we have to go away for a commercial, but we'll be right back. John Madden and I will return. We got uh, all kinds of stuff here tonight. the program. John Madden is here. Tell me about uh, when you were coaching. You still, of course, uh, would have uh, expert insight into the sport, as you uh, do when you're uh, providing analysis for the games. Tell me a couple of your theories. I know you had a theory about uniforms, uniform numbers. Well, yeah, I always had this feeling that people should have the right number. And uh, I used to do this as a kid. I would see some, you know, and I'd say, you know, the, this, I'm this number and so-and-so is that number. And, I still feel the same way that, you know, there's certain things that just don't look right. For example, you take the number 83. That couldn't be a six foot one, 280 pound nose tackle. 83 has to be a tall guy. Mm -hmm. 83 is a tall number. You know, you t and then conversely, a guy who's 66 and is six foot eight just doesn't look good. He doesn't, he doesn't look right. Yeah, those would be and for a, a for the, dumpy the guard guy. type yeah. of guy. Yeah, yeah, the dumpy type guy. You know, and then the 74 is a tackle type and the... 80s are the big defensive ends, yeah. the 70, the large 70s, they're the, the bigger tackles and so on. Have you, have you thought about putting together a brochure with a, a, a number and then, and then a body example of what, you know, 77, and then you have a dumpy guy and then a 42, and you have a, you know... Well, 77's not dumpy now. 77's tall See, and, and this. That's I what mean, I mean. You know, like a, a 73 is a good dumpy guy. Uh, <laughs> Your strong dumpy would be 66. That's a good, that's, solid that's dumpy. Good, yeah. Now what? what 63 were, is nice dumpy. What were you when you played? 77. So you were the 77. <laughs> 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 so was dumpy. No, no, it wouldn't. Uh, and are you finding much uh, interest in this theory around the league? Well, you know, uh, there are some teams that will listen to me because uh -huh. I said this guy just doesn't. You can't play with that right. number. And uh, yeah, I I do find some interest. They've changed. Uh, some things now in the NFL where a defensive lineman can't be an 80 number. So it's tough for a good defensive lineman who's tall to play the game mm. anymore. Yeah. That's why you see all these short guys nose tackle these ugly guys. <laughs> uh, ugly guys, too. Oh, yeah. Ugly. Oh, you got to be yeah. ugly, especially to play nose tackle. That's uh, why they wear those big face masks. Now, you have, a, you have another theory about uh, facilities, locker rooms. I really think, I mean, I, I, I seriously feel this, that that the more money that players make today, the, the more sparse their locker room should be. And I think when you pay a guy millions of dollars, and then you have these big, thick carpets and so on, and you let him come in, he forgets what football is all about. And they don't like to go out and play. Mm. And I've seen it happen. I really believe, years ago, it happened to the Kansas City Chiefs. You know, they were a great football team. Then they got Arrowhead Stadium, and they had thick carpets. They had these whirlpools of 10, 12 guys. Well, Hank liked like that. Hank Stram liked stuff like that, good well, carpet and so yeah, on. Yeah, he did. Well, <laughs> talking about Hank, locker room, see, at Oakland, we believe, man, nothing. We wouldn't even put a carpet on the floor. <laughs> and we had the floor and the towels. We'd throw some towels there and tell them that was carpet. <laughs> but uh, that was one of the advantages I always felt that, that, that we had in Oakland, in the Oakland Coliseum, yeah. is that it was tough to come out there. We had great fans there. The other team coming out, they would really get on, really boom. And being down there below the locker rooms, it was, you know, kind of dirty and musty and stinky and, and so on. And <laughs> now you're a lot talking. Of stuff. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> now you're talking real football. And our guys kind of love that. Yeah. You know, the Oakland Raiders. Well, one time we were playing the Chiefs, and uh, it was a day before the game, and I was walking out of our locker room, and I was going by the visiting team locker room the day before. I saw about five or six guys out there, exterminator type guys, and I asked them what they were doing. They said, well, we have some rats. We found some rats in this locker room, in the visiting team room, and we're trying to get rid of them. 
I said, get rid of them, baloney. I said, feed them. Yeah. Don't get rid of them. I don't want to. I swear, I wouldn't let them do it. I said, get out, we'll pay you, whatever you want. Leave, leave the rats in the video, you know, if you yeah. found some. So now we're playing <coughs> the Chiefs the next day. So I'm the host coach. So I figure, well, you know, you got to be a good host. So I went up, and it was <coughs> the Chiefs were in the locker room. This is a couple hours before the game. Locker rooms before a game are very quiet. Mm. So I went up, and I knocked in the door, and I said, I'd like to see Hank. And Hank came up, so I talked real loud, and I said, Hank, listen, we have a problem here. There's some rats in the locker room. Now, we're trying to get rid of them, Hank. <laughs> yeah. We're trying to get rid of these rats. We'll do something. We're doing everything we can about this thing. But, you know, and you can see the players, background. they're afraid to put their helmets on. They're checking their pants and taking them off. And, uh, yeah. But those types of things, uh, I mean, help. That's, that's, you know, when you talk about home field advantage, yeah. that's what you're talking well, that's about. Good. <laughs> that's good, heady football. Uh, we got to pause for station identification. John Madden and I will return right after that. Talking uh, with the uh, recent uh, Emmy Award winner, John Madden, now, uh, when you were coaching, and you, of course you explained the home field advantage and what that means, uh, did, did you have anything inspirational to leave with players before they went out <laughs> into combat? Yeah, and I had no idea what it meant. Uh -huh. I used to always get in there and just before, you know, we'd get ready to go out there, we'd call up all the players and I would say if we were kicking off or receiving and then what we were going to do. And the last thing I always said was, don't worry about the horse being blind, just load the wagon. We go, walk out. I have no idea what it meant, but my guys liked it. You know, they'd go, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and then, boom, we'd go first out of there. Never, never had anyone ask me, hey, coach, what's that mean? I don't know, but it yeah. sounds good, doesn't it? Hey, don't worry about the horse being blind, just load the wagon. That's right. Go. Uh, that makes it sound like you're going to accomplish something. Now, right. you, yeah. don't know the, you don't know the origin of it? You just came to you one day? Nah, I just, I don't know. I may have heard it one day, or yeah. it just came to me one day, and then I used it for years. It'd be, ni it'd be nice to have that on a plaque somewhere, wouldn't it? On a plaque. Just don't yeah. worry about the horse being blind, load the wagon. Uh, <laughs> uh, it was a, a pleasure meeting you. I've admired your work for as long as you've been doing it, and uh, again, congratulations on your Emmy Award and come back and see us again if you will. Thank you. John Madden, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, John. Thank you, Fred. Don't worry about the horse being blind. Just load the wagon. Uh, speaking of loading the wagon, tomorrow, uh, we're not normally on uh, Friday night, and the reason for that is not clear to me, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, tomorrow is one of those deals where we will be on, and on that program tomorrow, we're darn proud about it, ladies and gentlemen. Actress, comedian Madeline Kahn will be joining us. Uh, comedian Pee Wee Herman will sort of be joining us. Uh, singer Chaka Khan will be joining us. Uh, we'll also have Steve Kahn on guitar. Uh, Larry Bud Melman will be here tomorrow night. <laughs> <laughs> we and uh, taxi races. That's right. Three people from our studio audience will try and race cabs around one block of rush hour traffic right here <laughs> in New York City. So uh, that'll be tomorrow night on uh, uh, the anomaly we like to call our 90-minute uh, program. Also, uh, Jerry Seinfeld will be joining us and the gentleman who uh, calls trains down at Penn Station.